Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and when we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today we have an interesting episode for you guys. Definitely want to stick around for it, so make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, I believe it was just yesterday, just yesterday, where, where we produced the show reacting to the comments that Shannon Sharp had to make about Kevin Durant. And let me just quickly say, I don't know where this notion is coming from because, you know, I'm taking, it seems like I'm defending Kevin, Kevin Durant is not even my favorite player. People act like, oh, you're defending, uh, when, when, is, when have I even ever said that KD is my favorite? What team has KD ever been on that I supported? Kevin Durant is not my favorite player. It's just how I feel about that particular topic. But anyway, during his soliloquy to use the term, the word that uh, these guys use in, in, in this space um, on Kevin Durant, he was talking about LeBron this is Shannon Sharp. He brought in LeBron on, I think, him and Skip or whatever it was. They were talking about LeBron. Uh, and he said, LeBron James is a leader. And I give him that. And he says, he always accepts the blame when things go wrong. And I immediately pushed back, pushed back on that notion when Shannon Sharp up, you know, said that. I said, LeBron almost never, almost never accepts any of the blame when things go wrong. And usually, his teammates' reputations end up being tarnished when things usually go wrong. And I give examples of this, of Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, Kyrie Irvin, Kevin Love, Russell Westbrook, uh, Andre Drummond. Like, there's so many examples. It, all, it always, the blame always seems to end up at the, at the, at the, uh, um, at, at the footsteps of somebody else. There's always somebody else when, when, whenever we're talking about the blame. And this morning, um, I was watching a segment from his show, The Shop, and during this segment, LeBron himself gave yet another example of what I mean. But before we go any further, this video is brought to you by Aura, the sponsor of this video and the official sponsor of the Minnesota Tim of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who's the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com slash dreamers pro. And when you try Aura by using the link in the description below, also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. Let's get into what LeBron James had to say about his teammates and himself within a team concept. So we're going to play these comments and then we're going to come back and react to it. Take a listen to what LeBron had to say here. You just said it like the culture is the number one thing. Fair or not fair, do you love that pressure at this point in your career of like win or bust? I don't care about scoring title, I don't care about anything. It's win or bust. You think, do you like that pressure? Yeah. I'm obsessed with it, with win or bust. And what all, what, what, what makes me have sleepless nights is when you don't have everyone that feels the same way in your on your club. That's the culture you were talking about. Like, it's times where I wish I was like a tennis player or a golfer, where it was literally like, look in the mirror, is you versus you. Have, you. have you seen players like transition in terms of like not have that mindset and then actually halfway through the season or halfway through the time that you've been there, grow that mindset yeah, absolutely. of like win or bust or yeah, you can, have, like, you you can, can like think and you judge someone too early essentially or something. Well, you can, you can have guys that come from different clubs and different teams and they've played losing basketball for years. Like literally, who's on that, on that club? You can have Jordan, you can have Shaq, Allen Iverson, and Jesus Christ could be their coach. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna lose. Yeah. They're gonna lose. It's like literally the culture. But you can get a, a player from a losing culture and you can see 
literally in the first couple weeks if they really like want it or they don't. Now I want you all to imagine for a second, just imagine for a second that you're working in a company with someone like this. Imagine if you're on a team, right? You're on a team with someone in a company. Maybe you guys are set up, maybe they set up a, a, a committee to do something, right? And, and you're working as a team, right? And you guys had a terrible performance, right? You guys didn't deliver whatever the case was. And the best employee, the best, uh, yeah, the best staff within that group, the best of you basically comes out and says, man, sometimes I wish I was a golfer or I wish I was a tennis player. Now, regardless of the analogy the guy was trying to make, how do you think that's going to come off to his teammates and more importantly, to the viewing public? When the public hears comments like that, I can almost assure you what they're going to say. They're going to say, number one, is LeBron taking shots at his teammates? Couldn't those comments be, uh, is he, is, he, uh, uh, is that an underhanded, what is it, this to Russell Westbrook? Is he saying that Russell Westbrook, you know, he wishes he wasn't on the team with them. If you look at me, that's automatically what people are going to assume. And some people say, oh, no, 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 man. You're pushing this thing a little bit too far. You, that's not what they would think. Well, I'll tell you exactly why people would think that. They would say that because of what just happened. Last season, the Lakers had arguably, arguably, the worst season in NBA history, considering the level of talent and the expectations going into the season. It was a total disaster. There's no two ways to say it. Total disaster. And after the after the way the season ended, after their head coach being fired, everyone was trying to figure out, you know, who's most to blame, what went wrong, whose fault was it. That's where we all were, right? Everyone was trying to figure out, you know, how did it end up like this when going into the season, so many people had so many high expectations of the Lakers because they were the team that was picked to represent the Western Conference. Think about that. The Lakers were the team that was picked to represent represent the West. And I was one of the few people, even Stephen A. Smith himself said it. I picked either the Warriors. Let me say it again for Warriors fans. Either the Warriors or the Clippers, if they were healthy, obviously, uh, that didn't happen. But the Lakers had extremely high expectations. So they failed. And then when their best player comes out and says something like this on the shop, automatically people will then try to connect the dots and say, well, wait a minute. Is LeBron talking about his current set of teammates? Because if he's not, then what is he talking about? People are automatically going to make that connection because of the type of season that the Lakers had last year. That is where this conversation is going to start. And I can almost guarantee you on Monday, uh, what is it? Um, shows like first take, get up, undisputed, first things first. These guys are going to be talking about those things. Part of it may, be just, may, may just have to be that, well, they need to fill the air. They need to talk about something. But another aspect of it is I truly, truly believe that these comments are going to be viewed as LeBron James throwing his teammates under the bus. And to me, I don't understand why you say that. Like, I understand you're in the shop. You're having, you know, a candid, uh, you know, sports conversation. But at the same time, you're still within a team and you have teammates and when the best player is saying that sometimes I wish I was a golfer, even if he doesn't mean it the way people are going to take it, you have to, it, it doesn't really matter because as Shannon Sharp says, it's not your intent, it's the result, right? And how are the how are, how are his teammates going to take it? And I think some of them are going to feel a type of way that their best player is essentially saying, man, sometimes I wish I was a tennis player or a golfer. Obviously, you would take it as a diss because those are individual sports. Those are not team sports. Right. Those are not team sports. And he also made some comments about culture. And, you know, I've seen some players that come from a losing culture when they come to this, you know, when they come into a winning culture, all of a sudden you can see it in them and all of these different things. Maybe, you know, he said and then he also said in one of his comments, my expectation is to what is it? Win or bust, win or bust. That's always his expectation. That's always his, his predisposition. And then if you think about the comments that Russell Westbrook made when they asked him, what were his expectations coming into this season? And his, his his answer was, I had no expectations. A lot of people are going to assume that these comments that LeBron James was making was about Russell Westbrook and the current batch of his teammates, whether you like it or not. So these are my thoughts and opinions. And the question really to you guys is this. Number one, do you think he was 
you know, sneak this in his teammates? And number two, do you think other people in the media are going to pick up on this story and basically run with it? Whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And we'll catch you all on the next episode. Peace.